So, uh, so, so far we've kind of been focusing on the shortage side. And in the beginning I said, well, really it's shortages and diversity. So now I wanna show you how GIS can help as you think about diversifying the educator workforce. Um, in our second webinar, we shared with you all the Talent Development Data Tool 2.0. And so I wanna connect how you might add GIS um, to explore diversifying the workforce, kind of going back to some of the things we talked about in the last webinar. Um, so if you recall the Talent Development Data Tool, uh, showed you some different ways to look at where to prioritize which districts to focus on to address diversifying the educator workforce. And in that webinar, uh, we highlighted three different approaches. And so I wanna kind of review what those approaches were and then show you what they look like if we were to map um, those different approaches. So the first one was just, where are your students of color? Um, so in that last webinar, we talked about two fictional districts, Jefferson City and Adamstown. And in this, this approach, you would choose Jefferson City because they have 75% students of color, where Adamstown has 25%. And so if we were to map that, you could see in Colorado, where is the focus of their students of color? So the districts highlighted in red have the greater percentage of students of color. So perhaps not surprising, you see a lot in places like Denver, Colorado Springs, Pueblo. Um, but interestingly, if you don't know Colorado, there's a, a giant section in the southern part of the state where there's a lot more uh, Hispanic and Latino students. We see a little bit in the mountain range here. So it gives you a picture of some of the regional patterns of where you see concentrations of students of color in your state or district. So that was one approach. Uh, the second approach was to focus your diversity efforts in places that have a larger gap between the percentage of students of color and teachers of color. So again, in our fictional example, Jefferson City has a gap of 25%, uh, where Adamstown has a gap of 20%. So again, you might wanna focus in this approach uh, on Jefferson City. So again, I wanna show you what does this look like if we were to map this approach in Colorado. So again, the places that are in red um, have the largest gap or difference between teachers and students of color. So again, we still see Denver, um, some of the neighboring uh, suburbs, uh, Colorado Springs, Pueblo is no longer red. Uh, we see some of those same districts in the south, but not all of them, still some in this mountain range. Uh, so pretty similar from when we looked at just where are the students of color, but you're starting to see some differences. Now, if we were to focus on where do we see a gap between uh, teachers of color and students of color. And then the third approach where we spent a, the majority of our time talking about um, in the last webinar was looking at the ratio uh, between teachers of color and students of color. So this would take the number or rate of your students of color and then dividing them by the teachers of color. Uh, and so trying to focus on the places that have that larger ratio. And so this approach is based on some research from Hansen and Quintero from the Brookings Institute. And if we went by this ratio approach, now our fictional districts, the ratio is larger in Adamstown versus Jefferson City. And the, the rationale for you know, encouraging this approach is that the students of color in Adamstown or other places that may have a larger ratio between the students and teacher of color are less likely to ever meet a teacher of the same race. And so they may be more vulnerable and exposed to things like bias and discrimination than the students of color in places like Jefferson City. Um, because they have 50% teachers of color, they are likely to have a teacher at some point uh, who looks like them. And so they are less likely uh, than maybe the students in Adamstown to experience and be exposed to those bias and discrimination. Um, so this was sort of the new addition to our data tool that we shared in the last webinar to think about where to prioritize um, in those places where our students might be more vulnerable because they are less likely to meet a teacher that looks like them. 
Uh, so now I want to show you if we were to take this approach at looking at the ratio rather than the gaps, what does our mapping look like and what sort of regional trends do we see? So again, the districts in red are those places where we see that larger ratio. Um, and then in some places, there isn't any teachers of color to calculate. So that's why you see some gray districts. So you can see now it's quite different from the maps we looked at when we looked at just where the students of color are located and where the ratio is. Um, Denver is no longer in red. Pueblo is now green, so they have a pretty great ratio. Um, some of these southern districts are still red, but a lot of them aren't anymore. And there's a lot more kind of south of the mountain range, some more in this upper corner here. So you're starting to see um, different places when we look at the ratio. And these are some more remote rural places. And so, you know, there may just be one student of color in, a, in, a, in, in all by themselves. And so this kind of highlights that those students might be more vulnerable. And you can see some different regional patterns as you think about where do we want to prioritize. Uh, you could also layer other data sets on top of this to see some other conditional factors, like what does the race and ethnicity of the community look like outside of the school walls? Um, what do the graduates from our prep programs, how diverse are they and are they getting hired in these districts? Um, so you can add some different layers to see, again, what are some possible solutions as you think about patterns. Um, so here's just a side by side. So you can really see the difference between the rate, the gap. So just the percentage of teachers of color to students versus the ratio where we were dividing the students by teachers. Um, so you can really see that this gives you a different picture as you think about where you might want to prioritize addressing uh, educator diversity. Uh, so that was just an, another example and lens of how you could look at educator diversity in addition to shortages, kind of building on the talent development data tool 2.0. So what it would look like if we were to map it. Um, but both for strengthening and diversifying the workforce, you know, these mapping tools can help you identify regional patterns. So it's not just focusing on where are the gaps or where are the challenges, but can help you identify possible opportunities and resources and ways to partner in order to help you address um, educator shortages and diversity. Uh, and the other unique thing is just the ability to layer additional data um, so that we're not just getting to the challenges, but exploring some possible causes or the why we're starting to see some of these challenges. So really unpacking the intersection between these different systems and how they're impacting our educator workforce. Things like all that community data that you were talking about being interested, like salary, unemployment, what does the community look like? So we can layer that on top of our workforce data to get a clearer picture of these systems. Uh, and really it can be a helpful tool for convening these different cross-sector entity partners. Um, it, I don't know what, they find the tool very cool. And so it's often a great way to bring folks together who are often siloed as Carolyn mentioned, um, so that they're really exploring possible challenges and solutions together, possible partnerships. So again, that we can help make sure that we're bringing together these right teams so that they're taking the right action, so the right evidence-based strategy, and targeting it to the right place. Um, educator shortages and diversifying the workforce is a systems problem. So there's not going to be one strategy that works for a state or a district. It might require looking at a couple of different strategies, but targeting those strategies in the right place based on what's going on in that context. And so GIS mapping is a useful tool to help you think about what's the right strategy and targeting it to the right place.